Hello and welcome to today's lesson on scatter plots. It's going to be covering topics under the standards 3.1b and 3.2, and also it's going to be helping you out with the lesson in study islands called scatter plots. So if you're working on any of those things, this is where you want to be. And we're going to be talking, like I said, about scatter plots and lines of best fit and when which sets of data is good to use a scatter plot with. And whatnot. So, and these are great to use in science and in business. You see these a lot as representations of data. So, just remember as we're working through these problems, we have some study tips. You can pause, rewind, and fast forward as much as you need to. If you are t taking notes with me, and I hope you are, you can, if I go too fast, just press pause, catch up, and join back up with us when you're ready. And you can also pause at the beginning of an example, think about what you think the answer should be, and then press play and see how well you did. And that'll give you a gauge on how much more practice you might need. So I'm glad that you're here, and let's go ahead and start off with some notes. So first, let's go ahead and define what a scatter plot is. It says a graph that shows a relationship between two sets of numerical data. And a scatter plot can have three types of correlation. We can have positive correlation, which is when as the x data increases, the y data increases, or vice versa, as one decreases, they're both decrease. Um, one decreases, the other one decreases. So lots of times that looks like this. So you have all of these points and they're slowly rising together. And an example of that is as studying increases, your GPA, your grades are going to increase also. So you can also have negative correlation. So negative correlation is as X decreases, Y increases, or the other way around, as X increases, Y decreases. So they're doing the opposite. And so when you do that, you'll have all of these points and they look like they're slowly decreasing. And so it's an example that would be as hours you work increases, so time away from school, your GPA is going to decrease. And then you could have things that don't even have correlation. And they're going to look like a bunch of dots all over the graph. They're not looking like they are increasing or decreasing at all. So that's when there's no relationship between the variables. And an example of that is going to be height in your GPA. So your GPA isn't related to if you're five foot one or if you're six foot two. There's, there's no relationship. So that's why those points would be all over the place. Now, once you have a scatter plot drawn, you can draw what is called the line of best fit. A line of best fit is a line on a scatter plane that most of the points are close to. It shows the relationship between the two variables. So just to just so you know though, this is not like a line graph where you connect the dots. This one is just showing the average between the dots. And we'll show you some an example here. So if I have a graph and I have these points, I'm going to draw a line of best fit through the middle of all that data. So it should be the average of all those points. So it would be something similar to that. Notice I did not connect the dots. And so when would you be most likely to use a scatter plot? A scatter plot is most likely used to examine two sets of data and to investigate the correlation between the two variables. So if you want to know if two th variables affect each other or not. All right, in this first example, it says a trainer wants to determine if there is a correlation between the amount of sleep an athlete gets and the number of sit-ups an athlete can compete. So there's the number of hours of sleep daily and the number of sit-ups completed. And then we have all our points here. So what can be interpreted from this data? So if you look here, it says there's a negative correlation there's positive, there's both positive and negative, and there's no correlation. So let me give you a heads up. You can never have both positive and negative. That, that just doesn't happen ever. So that's never going to be an answer. So if I look here, 
Are these dots in general increasing, decreasing, or neither? Neither. So your answer here is going to be D. There is no correlation. In this example, it says the following data reflects monthly rainfall and how it relates to the attendance at Sandy Shore Park. So what can be interpreted from this data? Is it negative, both positive and negative correlation, positive correlation, or no correlation? So as I look here, these dots are slowly decreasing. So that's going to be a negative correlation. As the monthly rainfall increases, the smaller the number of visitors are. So since one is increasing and the other one is decreasing, that's negative correlation. In this example here, Jolie wants to know if there's a correlation between a person's age and his or her height. She collected some data and displayed it in the scatter plot below. We have age and height, and age on the Y, and height on the X. What can be interpreted from this data? Is there no correlation, positive correlation, negative correlation, or both? Well, once again, this is never going to be an answer. And so I look at these dots. Are they generally decreasing, increasing, or neither? Well, in general, they're going up. They're increasing. So that's going to be positive correlation because as height increases, age also increases. So since they're both going up, that's positive correlation. The following data represents the number of miles traveled during a recent vacation and the number of times a family stopped to view the scenery. So we have a table. How could this data be interpreted on a scatter plot? First, a scatter plot would not be appropriate graph for this information. A scatter plot would show no correlation between miles traveled and number of stops. A scatter plot would show positive a shut correlation, a scatter plot would show negative correlation. So, well, first of all, it's appropriate because there are two numbers, sets of numbers, so you can plot those points. And so here, you want to look, is as one of these, as it increases, does the other one increase or decrease? So they don't really have them in order, so you kind of have to look. So number of, I'm going to start with the smallest number of stops and go up. So the smallest is 250, and then 350, and then we're back down at 175, and back up at 250, back down 125, go up to 350, and then back down at 75. So those really jump around as I put the number of stops in order. So since it's not really increasing or decreasing, it's going to be no correlation. So this example here is very s similar. It says, the following data represents the number of hours a musician practices his flute as it relates to perfect performances. So how would this data be interpreted on a scatter plot? Well, is it not appropriate, no correlation, positive correlation, or negative correlation? So if I look, they have the hours practiced in order. So as they're increasing, the number of perfect performances, those numbers are also going up. They're also increasing. So since both of these are increasing, that's going to be positive correlation. Okay, this question here says, what scatter plot below has the best line of best fit? So a line of best fit will have some data points on top, some below it. It's not going to have a huge amount above or below. So if I look at letter W here, there's some below and there's some above. It looks pretty even. It, the line looks like it was drawn down the middle of them. So W could be my answer. In X, I have a lot more data points below than I do above. So it's not going to be X. In Y, I only have one above and everything else is below. So Y is not going to be my answer. And then in Z, I don't have any below, they're all above, so Z is definitely not my answer. So that means my answer is that W, that one that looked nice in the beginning, so it's going to be letter A. Okay, this equation example here says choose the equation below that would be the line of best fit for the scatter plot. 
So what you can do here is you could draw your best line and best fit and see which one matches the best. So it looks something like this. But what I would like to do is just actually graph each of these and see how they do. So if I look at them, they all end in 10. So that means all of them are having a y-intercept of 10. Okay, but letter A, it has a slope of negative 1. So that letter A slope is negative 1, and I can stick a 1 underneath of it to get my rise over run. So I'll go ahead and write that over here so remember it. The top number you, is your rise, your bottom is your run. Remember, you have to rise out of bed before you can go for a run. So the negative 1, that's going to tell me I need to go down 1 and then over 1. And I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to keep doing that a few times and get a few data points and see if that really looks like a good line of best fit. So if I connect those points on my line of best fit, yeah, that looks pretty good. I have some numbers, data points below, and I have some above. It looks like a pretty good average, like it goes pretty well down the middle. So it could be A, but I'm going to go through and see if B, C, or D are any better. So letter B, my slope there is negative one half. So that, the number on top is negative 1. It tells me I need to go down. And then the 2 means I need to run 2 to the right. So I'm going to go down 1 and 2 to the right. 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 And I'm going to do that a few times. And if I connect those points, this actually puts all the data below. There's none above. So it's definitely not B. So now I'm going to look at letter C. My slope in letter C is negative 3 fourths. So that means I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 4. So that means I'm going to put a point right there. And I'm going to do that again, down 1, 2, 3, and over 4. And I connect those points. And once again, most of my data is below that line. So it's not going to be C. It's not a good representation of that graph. And then my last slope in D is negative 3 over 2. So that means I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 2 and put a point there. And then I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 2. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 2 and plot those points. And most of those dots are above the line. So that's not a very good average between the lines by line of best fit. So my answer is A. So in this problem, they're actually really nice and give us the line of best fit already. It's right here. And it asks the line of best fit is shown in the scatter plot below. What is the equation of the line of best fit? Well, I'm going to use my slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And I just need to fill in this slope in front of x and the y intercept on the end by itself. So this line here, it touches the y-intercept at axis at 9. So that 9 is going to be my y-intercept. And then I just need to figure out the slope. So I look for two points on the graph. There it touches the grid paper on a corner. And I count the rise of a run. So I'm going down 1. So that's my rise. And then I'm running over 1 also. And this is a downhill line, so I'm going to have a negative slope. Negative 1 over 1 is the same as negative 1x, or it can also just be negative x because that 1 is assumed. So my equation here is going to be y equals negative x plus 9. So that means my answer here is a. Which of the following is, would be the best displayed on a scatter plot? Okay, so if you remember back to our notes, we said that scatter plots are best used to examine data and to see what if there is a correlation or not. So we want to scatter plots are most likely used for two things that you want to see if they're related or not. So letter number A, or sorry, choice A, it says the size of a home and the household electricity bill. Well, I would want to see if those two things are related. 
Um, maybe if my, if I go buy a bigger home, I'd want to see it. Maybe I'm going to have a higher electricity bill. So the type of car owned and the number of families in a family. Well, the, a type of car like van, SUV, sedan, those, that's not numerical data. I have to have numbers. That was the definition of a scatter plot is numerical data. So I can't do B because type of car isn't a number. Letter C, the number, the amount of money in a bank account over the course of a year. Well, over the course of a year, we're talking about time passed. We don't usually use scatter points for the amount of time passed. That's more a line graph. So we're not going to use C. And the percentage of students in each grade at Peterson High School, we don't use scatter plots for percent. Well, that's what we use for circle graph. So it's not going to be D. So our answer is A. Last example. Which of the following data would be best displayed on a scatter plot? The favorite ice cream flavors and the age of people who choose them. Well, favorite ice cream flavors would be chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Those aren't numbers. We have to have numbers to work on a scatter plot. So this would be better off as a bar graph, not a scatter plot. Growth of marigolds and the amount of fertilizer fed to the plants. Well, how tall they are, that's a number. How much I give them, that's a number. And it would be interesting to see if that actually has an effect. If I give them more fertilizer, does that help them or hurt them? So it could be B. Let's look at the other ones. The number of babies born at several different hospitals. Well, the, the hospitals, that would be like um, Integris, St. Anthony's. They don't really have numbers. That's a category again. So I can't use C. And then temperatures in Riley. Well, that only has one set of numbers. I'm just not really comparing it to anything. So it can't be D because there's no comparing. So my answer here is B. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.